This next story raises really serious questions about fairness, faith, and potentially the abuse of power in the Church of England. Reverend Dr. Bernard Randall, a man of deep conviction, found himself blacklisted by his own diocese for simply preaching the church's teachings on marriage and sexuality. Now, the safeguarding process that led to this has been called egregious uh, and deeply flawed, with even the Archbishop of Canterbury being accused of misusing his powers to shield the Bishop uh, of Derby from accountability. Dr. Uh, Randall now joins me to share his side of this shocking story. First of all, I'm going to put my cards on the table here, Reverend. I can't believe it. I can't believe that you can get blacklisted for the crime of reciting the teachings of the Bible. But that's what's well, happened, isn't it? It's, it's crazy. Thank you for having me on, Lemba. It's It is really quite an extraordinary situation as far as i can see um and it's not even as if that the sermon in question was very sort of hard line you must accept traditional christian understandings of, of marriage and so on it was you may believe these things if you choose um no one's forcing you make up your own mind respect those who disagree with you so it was expressed in really moderate terms uh, but it seemed that the the, the authorities in the diocese simply felt that that expressing those views um in in it i mean i was a school chaplain so it was in a, in a context of of you know helping people to understand what the church's teachings on some things are and giving them the option um but being willing to give young people the option of accepting church teaching w was deemed somehow to be harmful and i i can't make head or tail of that um, the extraordinary thing is that all the secular authorities, the, the local authority designated officer for safeguarding, um, the disclosure and barring service and, and so on, they all said there's absolutely nothing to see here. There's absolutely fine. There, there is no safeguarding problem. But it's the church itself, which should believe these things, treated it as a safeguarding problem, that I was somehow at risk of, of harming or abusing people um and they even extended that to adults in congregations in in churches if i was to go to a church and preach these things maybe there would be a risk to to somebody there it, uh, i i can't really understand how they came to those conclusions that's i i, I have a very strong faith i'd be if we had more time i'd be delighted to discuss theology with you but leaving my own views aside what were these heinous opinions that you've expressed well i i said that you may if it seems right to you um accept that or take take believe that um marriage is properly only of a man and a woman for life mm -hmm. uh, and that sexual activity belongs as an ideal only in such a relationship um and there's there are positive reasons for that um i said that you may believe that biological sex is real uh can't be changed and sometimes makes a difference and i suggested that you you may look at the language of gender identity and say it, it doesn't make sense it's incoherent can't be more than partly true but i emphasized repeatedly no one should be discriminated against everyone is loved by god and and most importantly respect the people you disagree with respect the sincerity of those who have different opinions and, and that's how we go along in society where competing ideas uh, are held the Archbishop of Canterbury seems to be involved in this. He's been criticised for his handling of the case. Uh, what did he do and, and what's your opinion? Well, I, I made a complaint about the way I had been treated by the Bishop of Derby, who was responsible for all safeguarding in Derby Diocese. When you complain about a bishop, it goes to the Archbishop. So that's why he was involved. And he had to determine whether the complaint went forward or, or not. Um, and he initially simply dismissed it um he uh, and i appealed against that and a senior uh, church legal officer said no you've got this plainly wrong in a number of ways it must go forward for, for further investigation um so he tried the archbishop on a couple of occasions simply tried to dismiss it say no further action uh, there's nothing to see here um and and what was particularly striking to him is that he i mean part of my complaint about the bishop was that i was myself the victim of abuse because i was mistreated um the archbishop completely ignored that and he ignored all the opportunities to, to try and seek reconciliation which when he 
wears the the cross of nails that the, the cross that he wears on his chest you'll, you'll notice mm-hmm. it's cross of nails to do with coventry cathedral which has a, a deep ministry of reconciliation so he can travel off to i don't know south sudan and, and do important work there trying to seek reconciliation between warring factions but when it comes to a dispute within his own province in in england he doesn't do anything to help reconciliation he simply waves it away and and that's well let's say that's disappointing I, I think he could have done better i know he's doing a difficult job he's got a lot on his mind but he's got plenty of staff to help him um, plenty of advice he can get um and and so it just feels like it was waving it away rather than taking it seriously i think you're being very diplomatic uh, on something as important as this he is setting a precedent uh, i have got a lot of interest in uh, the oasis foundation and steve chalk who takes a different view to you right about these matters but he would never dream of cancelling you he would never dream of excluding you from a debate and this is the thing that bothers me as a student of theology myself i find it fascinating to have a debate about literal figurative interpretation of the bible but none of this is anywhere near the concept that your views are a risk to your diocese has anyone explained yeah. to you why you are a danger to the public no uh, absolutely not and, and this is one of the things it's, it's not actually my views it's the church of england's views <laughs> that i was expressing it's not even as if it's, i'm a particularly strange person in that respect now up and down the land there are clergy who will hold these views that are the views of the church of england on these topics and there are good reasons for that and you can debate it and that's absolutely fine whatever um i don't mind that other people have different views um it's open debate is important um but no one of the reasons i complained about the bishop in in the formal process was that she's never told me what it is that gives the cause for concern and and there's a there's a set of guidelines which there's a legal obligation to follow those and she simply hasn't followed them uh, and and throughout the process, the guidelines have simply been ignored, as far as I can see, because they had already decided, oh well, he's guilty of these terrible things, um, and and so we don't need to bother following the guidelines. We can just move on with with blacklisting him. Um, so yeah, one of the complaints is I've never been told specifically what is the cause for concern, how that has anything to do with safeguarding. So I simply don't know. Five years on, they still haven't told me, despite me asking repeatedly what is the precise cause for concern what is it that you're actually accusing me of uh, the archbishop of canterbury is no stranger to politics he infamously in my view said that jesus would have taken the vaccine to which i say why would he have needed to <laughs> uh, another one uh, is that he's he's weighed in on the far right smearing the far right saying that if you're actually not the far right smearing protesters saying if you get involved in the protesters you're essentially far right why has he decided that the traditional division which goes probably right back to henry the eighth really um between politics and the church is no longer relevant well the the division between politics and the church goes back at least to jesus because he said yeah. when asked about paying taxes render unto caesar right. the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god so it's a it's a, a two thousand year old distinction it's a tricky one i think the archbishop as the leader of the, the national established church has a role in speaking into political matters um and if christianity touches all of life then that has to include politics um for me i think he strays too far in taking sides um i you know he, he condemns the far right and i want to say well yes but now define far right and where is your condemnation of the far left uh, of whom there have been plenty on the streets with their socialist workers party placards on the counter demonstrations um so so i i think he's he struggles with the balance there um as i said before he's doing a difficult job uh, and I'm, I'm not sure i would be keen on trying to do that job but there are certainly things that i would do very differently um and and i wonder whether he's more concerned with the, the status and the position of the church of england um uh, in society rather than the status of the church of england uh, in the eyes of jesus 
Uh, and so he's perhaps skewed from where he, he really ought to be, would be my feeling on the matter. But I guess you'd have to ask him. What happens next? How do you proceed? What happens next is that uh, I've launched a judicial review uh, about the, the dismissal of my complaint. Uh, there seem to be some serious problems, some really badly unexplained issues um, with the, the process, um, so, which is an extraordinary thing to do. It's never been done before, so it's completely new, uncharted legal territory. I don't know where that will go. Um, I have been told that there are plans to restart the safeguarding process from scratch because the review showed how awfully flawed it was. Um, but beyond being told it's going to happen, I've had no communication to tell me when or exactly how or, you know. So an unfair process is going to be replaced with, well, as far as I can see, a process that's, that's completely opaque and therefore unfair um, is, is not a satisfactory situation. So I, I wait and see. Um, I do want to say uh, a big thank you to Christian Concern who have been supporting me both legally and pastorally because it's been a very difficult time uh, going through all of this. Um, so they have been fantastic. Um, ChristianConcern.com slash Bernard uh, to see more details. And if people want to donate to the cause, which, you know, legal action is not cheap. On their side, they have wokeism, conformity and political correctness. On your side, you hopefully have the deity, your faith and the Bible. I think I'd be betting on you. You won't even need a miracle as far as I'm concerned. But thank you so much. And do please keep us posted. I want to see how this turns out. Thank you very much for being thank with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you've heard it here and we'll keep you posted on what happens to the Reverend Dr. Bernard Randall, whose crime seems to be interpreting the Bible as it's written. Wherever you stand on the question of faith, it doesn't seem just to me.